Hey, welcome back. It's Nolan Mathias from Market360. And today we're discussing numbers and stats and the fact that housing sales are up by 462%. That seems like a really weird number. I wonder why. Well, we're going to talk about all that in today's video. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers where one lucky subscriber is going to win $5,000 towards their RESP, their RSP, or their TFSA just for subscribing to this channel. It's free, it's easy, it's definitely worth it. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'll wait. The definitive guide on how to manage your credit Product, penalty, price, in that order. It's never been more important to get your mortgage right. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's discuss stats and numbers and what you should be expecting over the next couple of months because it is going to be an absolutely insane couple of months with respect to news articles and headlines and stats and all of that stuff because what happened last year was the pandemic pretty much made all of our stats for 2021 almost irrelevant. Well, not irrelevant, but skewed and really hard to rely on and really hard to decipher. And I'm gonna point out right out of the gate here the article that is the premise for this whole video, and that is this article from BNN that states that Calgary home sales are up 462% and reach a record high in April. Now, 462%, an increase in 462%, that seems like an almost unbelievable number. And the reality of it is, is it is probably a little bit too good of a number to be true. Now, I will give you 100% the fact that real estate sales in Calgary were up in April of this year over April of last year. But that's because in April of last year, they were very much deflated. And this video, this video is not about Calgary. This video is about stats in general and what you need to pay attention to in the coming months so that you don't get fooled by headlines like this. Because here's the reality of this situation. Yes, there was this headline, it came up yesterday. What was interesting about it was I had to go back into my history today to find it because uh, BNN had stripped it from the homepage. The reason why is because that 462% number is just quite frankly, a misleading number. I woke up this morning to all sorts of Instagram posts from local realtors talking about how, how, how home prices were up by 462%. And it just made me realize that we're gonna have to do some education on how the numbers are gonna look for the next couple months so that people aren't getting surprised. And so what I did is I dug deep into the actual numbers and pulled up the Krebs forecast. Now, in Krebs news release, they do not say anywhere that home sales are up 462%. No, they're significantly smarter than that. They go through and they talk about, you know, the details of the market, how there was a record number of sales, but they don't actually use the number until such time as you get into their monthly statistics package. And at the very top of the monthly statistics package, as as they do every single month, they put in their sales, their new listing numbers, and their inventory numbers. And this is the one right here that obviously jumps out at everybody. Sales are 3,209 in April, and that is up 462%. Now, if this was a normal April compared to the previous April, yeah, I might go, wow, those are big numbers. But the reality here is you can't use the numbers from the previous year in order to get any sort of feeling for what's actually happened in the market, happening in the market. Because yes, sales are up pretty significantly over last year, but last year's numbers were highly deflated. And if you go and you take a look at the actual sales from last year, what you will see is, in last year, here's the number, the total sales were 571. Now, the reason why they were 571 and not 1500 was because of the pandemic and basically the lockdowns. I can speak for Calgarians and speak to the market here that pretty much housing sales stopped in April when none of us were able to leave our houses. Nobody knew what to do. Nobody was going out and buying houses. So what you need to do in order to get a more realistic number than this 462% number is you need to go back and look at previous data. So what I did is I went and I pulled the data from 2019. Actually, what I did was I pulled April 2020's report, which is where they reported the 500 and 73 sales. Here it is down at the bottom, total sales. And what you can see is that last year, sales were down 62.89% versus the previous year of 2019. Now, obviously we can't use that as a comparable number. So what we need to use is the 2019 number. And when you look at the 2019 number, there were 1,544 sales and that was pretty much a normal year. So what we can deduce from that is that sales 
this year compared to a normal year are still up. They're just not up 462%. They're up about 100%. So, you know, those numbers really, really get skewed and it is really easy to misrepresent them. And the reason why I think this is such an important topic is because this is what is going to happen in the next couple of months with respect to a lot of data. We're already seeing it in car sales. Uh, car sales in April were up 254% versus last year. Guess what? Same reason why. It is because last year there were very few sales because people weren't traveling out to car dealerships to buy cars especially when they didn't know what the next few months worth of income looked like. And then if you go and you take a look at the consumer price index, this is where we're going to see probably the most news, the most misrepresentation of numbers and, you know, specifically around the conversations with respect to inflation. I think those are going to be very hard uh, conversations to have because the data isn't really going to represent what's happening in the market. In fact, it's probably going to take until at minimum October of November or November of this year for us to really see what's happening with respect to inflation. And probably it's gonna take until 2022 to really see what's happening with respect to inflation and what's happening with respect to the job market and the amount of GDP growth. And what I wanna show you here is, is, is an example of why we need to be so careful about the numbers that we're reviewing going into 2022. And that is because this the if we look at the inflation numbers for this year, in fact, I'm gonna jump right into um, inflation numbers and the consumer price index. If you look at this, this year uh, and you compare it to April of 2020, which is back here, and I'm gonna make this easier for you guys to see. You know, obviously there was this big reduction in inflation, this deflationary period that all happened in pretty much a month, which was April and May of last year. And then what you're seeing is you've seen, we've slowly started to grow out of this and we're getting back to normal numbers. Now, what's gonna happen for the April numbers and what's gonna happen for the May numbers is this number is gonna spike quite substantially, probably up above 3%. And the reason why is because we're comparing it to, much like in the real estate market, reduced numbers from the previous year. And then from there, when we start getting into June, July, August, when things were going back to normal, that inflation number is going to drop back down again. And eventually what we're going to find is as we head into the fall and we head into 2022, it's going to normalize. And that's when we're going to get the best indication of what is actually happening with inflation. Because right now, um, Warren Buffett was did their annual shareholder meeting and he pointed out that Prices were rising for pretty much everything and they were accepting the rising prices and that inflation was certainly there. And it certainly is in certain types of goods. And for the most part, what that means is that we need to pay attention to what's happening with respect to inflation. But my guess is that as things start to normalize, as production of materials goes back to normal, as production of steel goes back to normal, we're gonna see those prices come back at least a little bit, if not a lot. And then what's gonna happen is our inflation numbers potentially are gonna go down. So really what this means, and, and the reason why I bring this up is that all of these numbers that are gonna be thrown out in the next few months are going to be numbers that are probably going to make us think that the economy is going really good, inflation's coming, interest rates are coming up, and they're going to get higher and higher and higher. But the reality of it is, is we don't know what's gonna happen until it actually happens in October, November, December, and we start to things, see things normalize. And I'm gonna give you an example of why you can't expect that inflation is going to be through the roof going into the fall. And we've talked about this with respect to gasoline prices. If you go and you look at gasoline prices year over year, they're up about 35% compared to last year. In Alberta, for example, they're up 46%. However, if you go back two years, you go back to 2019, gas prices are actually down slightly compared to the 2019 data. So where you might see that fuel prices are up 35% and that's a big deal and that's a big news article compared um, relative to last year. If you look at it relative to what happened pre-pandemic, it's actually not that big of a news or big of news. And then if we go back and we take a look at everything else, you know, look take a look at household costs, obviously, Household costs are down kind of across the board here. Uh, if you look at shelter costs, so this is housing, those are up quite substantially. If you go and you take a look at clothing though, this is down substantially. So what we're seeing is we're seeing this balance between the things that we are, we're seeing this balance between 
the things that people are purchasing and that are going up in value and the things that people are no longer purchasing like clothing and travel and household furniture and household goods that are going down in value. And that is what's going to balance out inflation. But the reality of it is, again, we don't really know what is going to happen with respect to inflation until these baseline months get weeded out of the system. Because obviously, when you see something like housing sales are up 462%, you have to take a look at that number and go, that doesn't seem right. And the reality of it is, is it isn't, it is right, but it's not accurate when you look at it as a predictor or as a commentary on what has happened in the market or what is going to happen in the market. Uh, so, you know, one thing I want to caution people is be really, really, really careful here with respect to the numbers that are coming out, the headlines. If you see something like inflation went to 4%, you know, expect that you're probably going to see that, that headline, but also expect that there's more to that data and that until October, November, December, when we get to those months where things were a little bit more normalized, we aren't really going to have a very good indication of what's happening with inflation. And therefore, we're likely not going to have a very good indication of what's going to happen with interest rates. And therefore, we need to maintain the status quo with respect to choosing the right mortgage products and making sure that we have the most flexibility in our mortgages going forward. Now, speaking of mortgages, we're obviously big proponents of variable rates right now. One, because you pay less for them up front, you pay for less for them in a penalty down the road. And three is because they have more flexibility with respect to two or three down, years down the road. If housing prices do correct, um, being able to still be able to sell your property without giving a huge amount of money to the bank with respect to a penalty. But we also realize that not everybody's going to get their mortgage through Mortgage 360, and we want to make sure that everyone is armed with the tools that they need in order to get the absolute best rate. So I created Secrets to Getting the Best Rate. It is a 60-minute course. It is priced so inexpens inexpensively that anybody who is getting a mortgage or anybody who is getting into the real estate market can afford it and can expect to get 10 to 50 times back their investment really, really, really priced that low. Uh, it covers things like how to negotiate with your bank, how to negotiate with your broker, uh, what things you can negotiate into the into your mortgage, what things you can't, and how much profit margin there is, which that chapter alone is worth the price of admission into the course because that chapter alone will save most people at least a few thousand dollars just by knowing how much room there is to negotiate in their mortgage. I've made that course available. The link is in the description below as well as a coupon code to get 50% off the already discounted price. That is, those courses are what supports this channel and our ability to give you this sort of information. So if you found it useful, please do feel free to purchase one of those courses. If you aren't in the market for a mortgage, go ahead, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers where one lucky subscriber is going to win $5,000 towards their RESP, RSP, or their TFSA. We'll see you on the next video. Cheers.